Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Spiritual Spotlight series today. I am joined by Rob Grover and Gary Logan. They are the founders of the Journeyman Collective, a company creating luxury guided magic mushrooms retreats in the mountains outside of Vancouver. They've hosted everyone from entrepreneurs and CEOs to athletes, performers, couples, and groups invest in the highest level of personal development and self-discovery. Thank you both so much for coming here. How are you both doing today? Wonderful. Excellent. Thank you so much for having us. <laughs> I'm so excited. So Rob and Gary, your journey involves guiding entrepreneurs and executives through professional psychedelic retreat to unlock creativity and potential. Can you maybe share one story of transformation from one of your guests that illustrates the impact of these retreats on their personal and professional lives? Mm -hmm. Definitely. There's so many to choose from, but the one that's popping to my mind immediately, we worked with someone recently and there was nothing really going wrong in that individual's life, but they felt like there was something that hadn't quite clicked in. And there was like a deeper level of calling and a deeper level of clarity that was sort of wanting to be like expressed out into the world. And she came and worked with us and she jokingly said that that was the, the deepest level of cosmic spa work that she's ever had done to her in his lifetime. And now that we are about a month and a half out from her guided journey with us, mm -hmm. she just has this deep level of clarity and this concise ability to move into creativity and let that newfound clarity express itself. She's like triggerless. She's just has this newfound level of awareness about herself. And if we really want to dive into another level of it, she recognized that everything in her life was going well, but there was karmic clearings that needed to take place that were clouding her perception of what was taking place in reality on the spiritual, mental, emotional, and physical levels. That sounds amazing. Um, let me ask you this. So psychedelics have gained attention as tools for unlocking creativity in business. How do you believe psychedelics can help individuals tap into their creative potential and approach problem solving from a different perspective? Mm-hmm. Oh gosh, where do you start? Uh, it's a clearing out of the old that no longer serves. Nice. So it's, it's recognizing the patterns of thought and speech that's going on in your, your world and looking at it as like, God, that story really no longer serves me anymore. Like, how is that serving me telling you about my past or, or, or a block that's happening and, and it's, you're repeating it. So with a psychedelic journey with psilocybin, um, and guided that we're able to help you shift out of that to see the pattern of the old and create a new habitual way of thinking and learning and being for your future. Mm -hmm. And I would like to add to that too, is that there's a big part of the work that we do that's focused on the embodiment part. Mm -hmm. So a lot of society is running around like bodiless chickens. It's just these heads clucking around <laughs> society and... <laughs> So when we actually learn how to embody this meat suit that we have been graced with in this lifetime, we're actually able to start to listen to it more deeply and attune to the clues and the cues that are showing up. And when we learn how to use the instrument of this like really potent level of, of technology that's coalesced into what we know as 3D matter, when we really learn how to operate that computer system essentially when we learn how to use that that technology that's so potent that's when we can just continually embody more and more and more and more and as we embody more then we get to actually use the the the, the human body as a potent powerful divine intelligence system do you find that a lot of the clients that come to you are not tapped in to their bodies at all? And really, like you said, I, there must be the, the chickens and the, the headless people. I mean, it's interesting how people just do not see keyed into their bodies. Well, yeah, I think it's, we've all been raised in a society where it's more on the mental plane and using the, the thinking mind. And we're going to think our way into reality and, and, 
we're sort of pulled up and out of the spirit or the soul or listening to ourselves or even awakening to our multidimensional self. So it's, it's people like for your listeners, what we see a lot of the time when we're speaking with people on discovery calls is people do this motion where they, they wave their hand in front of their heart and they say, there's something missing. There's something I haven't connected into yet. I don't know what it is but I feel like there's something there that's yet to be discovered about myself. And it, it, it wants to be discovered. It wants to be uncovered. Mm -hmm. And I think that's like the, where it's like, okay, we're going to open up that hopper. And it's like, whoop. Then the, the soul is like, Oh, okay. This is what it's like. It's safe to be in this body. Yeah. That, that's beautiful. So the journeyman collective offers luxury guided magic mushroom retreats in a stunning natural setting. How does the environment and setting contribute to the transformative experience of your guests have during these retreats? Uh, we've created a very safe and comfortable environment. So you're not in a yurt or in the forest and uh, you're in a lap of luxury. We find that you're going through a challenging time when you're on a journey and we want the environment to be as comfortable as possible for you during that journey of your inner discovery and so this is how we want our journeys to be how we personally wanted them and that we have experienced so there are multitudes of other ways of doing uh, a psilocybin retreat mm -hmm. but this is the way we feel that best honors the human so they can rest into self mm -hmm. it's a beautiful way to put it I really like that. It's a beautiful way. Um, let me ask you this, and I'm not sure if this is an appropriate question to ask. Can you explain the difference between micro dosing and macro dosing when it comes to psychedelics and how each approach can create shifts in consciousness and clarity? Mm -hmm. yeah. Micro dose equals micro shift. Macro dose equals macro shift. That's the short Get out of your body. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I envision macro dosing. Like, let's go. Um, and actually with the macro dose, with a lot of our journeys, it's deeply embodied. And people like the journey that we just guided this weekend, uh, several of the individuals are like, wow, that was really deeply uncomfortable and painful. And, but the thing is, is that they discovered dense, lower dimensional frequencies that wanted to be liberated and they had to go into them in order to allow soul, the universe, whatever you want to call it, to flow through them more. Mm -hmm. So it's microdosing is wonderful. It sort of chips away like little by little. It's like with sort of like a little ice pick chipping away at the unknown reality that's around us. Whereas <laughs> I guess uh, for going with ice pick, the macrodose would be akin to more like a a uh, black camera. Uh, I, I was gonna I'm say like a, a Titanic like a hitting the iceberg, like yeah, yeah. or a, a bulldozer mm -hmm. is sort of moving through a lot very, very quickly. Um, but also, like Gary said, in a very safe, guided process. And the way that we guide too is like their like dosage is very important for us mm -hmm. as well. And so that's like a an attuned guidance that comes through us and our clients. And it's a very fine line whereby some people may come in and be like, I want the ego death and the hero's death. And it's like, it doesn't matter. Like when, when the, when you push the scales too far one way, what can happen is that you get nothing from it because you don't remember anything or, or you don't have any, like the conscious mind in our journeys is still left online to some extent so that you can learn from it. So you're, you're aware of the information that's being presented. You can learn from it, understand from it. And then because the conscious mind is still online, there's this aspect of you can continue to remember back into different pieces of information that were presented to you so that you can harvest those riches for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. it's it, You bring up a very valuable point, regardless of whatever type of inner work you're doing there is a moment where you get to overload and nothing is retained and nothing right. is shifted and mm -hmm. it's like you have to be very conscious of where your dial is tuned to mm -hmm. or what you want to bring in that, that's a really valuable point so let me ask you this your mission includes making more conscious leaders in the world 
How do you help participants see, see their impact on the planet and strengthen their relationship with others, both personally and professionally? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's I like how you laugh question. at my questions. <laughs> <laughs> well, as soon as you start asking the questions, like I, I'm like thinking of clients and their transformation. And one of the things that we often say is that we're always in awe of the transformation that takes place in the four days that people are with us and like who they walked in as on the first mm-hmm. day and who they're leaving. They're two totally different people. The core essence of who they are is still there. But there's been this massive shift and this massive shedding of the old and awakening to the new. And so it, it just, yeah, it just makes me, it makes me giddy inside. And the the question that you asked too, it's like when people have an awareness of the truth of reality, the truth of who they are, and when they've actually explored deeper levels of their reality within self then they get to expand out into that and because they've been vulnerable with themselves they can then be vulnerable with people in their relationships Mm -hmm. their children their spouse their business partners their employees whatever or people that are working for them in some way shape or form and as a consequence of that that's a game changer when when you have that sense of like, oh, they just said something, but they're not saying something. And if I am willing to be vulnerable with that person, then they can potentially be vulnerable. And we can like unpack something that is hiding in the shadows that really wants to be brought up into awareness for both individuals. And then as a result, there's like a greater level of harmony that takes place as opposed to like just sweeping under the under the, the rug or ignoring like that oh i was just given a clue to like a deeper level of this human that's before me mm-hmm. absolutely anything else you want to add in no it's a, it's opening up your awareness to be in the moment you know Eckhart Tolle says be here now and it, it went through a journey we ask you to leave your baggage at the door as much as you can and you don't need to collect it on the way out it's basically it goes to the dumpster and it's taken away for you and it's to realize that you still can touch into it if you want you can still open up the suitcase to see what's inside but you know that that no longer serves and I'll let that go and then I have a a better understanding of who I am and what I'm representing in the world and what I have to offer. Mm -hmm. And one other thing I'll add to that too, is that one of, I think the biggest thing that people are really truly looking for Mm -hmm. is connection. They feel disconnected. They're looking for greater connection. And that connection can only happen if the individual is more deeply connected within self and the depth and the bandwidth of that connection to self our multidimensional self is it's it's never ending and so if they can at least start that reconnection process to be connected to the, the mind body and spirit or soul or the, the spiritual mental emotional and physical levels of, of awareness then that's a great place to start into that process of, of connecting to self so that you can connect with others that's beautiful. One of the things that um you mentioned about leaving the baggage, like I would imagine that people when they leave these amazing retreats just feel so liberated. Mm-hmm. Like the freedom that they feel and the oh, I can be my authentic self. Yes. Like that must be so powerful to witness. It is, and it brings like joy, joy of joyful tears to your eyes when you see them leave and you just see the they're lightened up. They've lightened the load. So the burn the burdens that we carry are released and let go. So you can be freer and breathe healthier. And your circulatory system is working 100% and not clogged up. Right. Mm-hmm. That, yeah. that is beautiful. So the inner work involved in preparing before and after a psychedelic journey is crucial. Can you maybe share some insights into the importance of this preparation and integration process? Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. The current culture that we live in, for the most part, we don't have the medicine man that lives in the village that we live in. It doesn't have the medicine man that lives in the city or the town. And that deeper level of truth has been sort of like 
stuffed away and kept away for only certain people. And so a big part of the preparation is creating context around what is what does this experience actually entail? What am I actually going to potentially go through? And can we install, not install, but uh, teach people to have a little bit of different dialogue of how they could start to take on conscious language just as opposed to just normal everyday three-dimensional polarity based language um and then start to open up to the idea that hey there might be actually something beyond 3d reality and so that's a big part of the preparation is sort of allowing people to not not brace themselves but I guess, prepare for that unknown, Mm -hmm. because for the most part in society, it's like, oh, if it's unknown, don't go there. That's too risky. Uh, So this is definitely stepping into the unknown. And then the the applied integration or the new AI is what we call it. And Mm -hmm. it's really teaching people how to garner value from the experience from the information that's presented that you, again, might not have context for. There may be things presented that are completely out of your bandwidth. And it's learning how to go back and touch into those moments again and again and again. Mm -hmm. And then asking the simple questions is, what am I to learn? What am I to understand? And then also, what is the actual implementation look like? And it's the implementation that closes that loop of, okay, I was presented information, I understand a little bit more. And as a function of that, now I'm actually doing something different in my life. And it might might be a new action or it might be a non-action. And that's one of the things that we really, I guess, hammer home, that it's not just about the intensive. It's, we almost feel like the most important part is after you reluctantly leave our center because most people want to stay and live with Robin. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I love that. Um, Anything else you want to add, Gary? No, that was great. It's uh, the integration, as Robert said, is the most important part. We feel the the journey is, you know, the opener for your new way of being. So the integration is we're here to remind you of what you saw, what you were, what did you learn and how are you going to implement that in your life moving forward other than falling back into our old ways of doing and being. It's interesting because in my day-to-day life, I'm a registered nurse that manages the doctor's office. So it is interesting to hear how you explain this. And it just, it just sounds like, you know, in, in my spiritual realm I do a lot of different things and it's interesting to like how you brought in the 3d and when you become this is uncomfortable and this has changed and I like that people are willing to kind of be to go on this journey and to really kind of be open to this amazing experience that like you said could be uncomfortable Mm-hmm. I like that. Oh, it, <laughs> <laughs> like, it is uncomfortable. Yeah. People don't like being uncomfortable. We're comfortable with being uncomfortable, though. I think yeah. in our day to day, people we get so in this routine of being uncomfortable, we don't even realize that we're in this um this shift of you know, oh, my life is ugh. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Yeah, totally. Yeah. It's like we're wearing these these weighted blankets around us. Like it's oh, it's just so much easier to stand with this weighted blanket. With all in of our them. meat suits as yeah. a chicken head off <laughs> i like how you put that <laughs> but i'm going to work tomorrow and be like guys let's talk about these meat suits okay <laughs> let's, let's optimize the meat suits. yeah let's right. optimize them let's shift some energy i think we yeah. need to go on a retreat <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. i love that so the journeyman collective offers a personalized experience that caters to the mind body and soul of each guest can you maybe describe some of the practices or offerings that contribute to this holistic approach? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Definitely. First question we always ask, do you meditate? <laughs> but meditation, we've realized, comes in many forms. You don't have to be sitting on a yoga mat and legs crossed and sit there for two or three hours or go to a mountain. Meditation is running, swimming, anything that you're engaged in, engaged in fully your presence that is a form of meditation. So we always say, tell us about 
your exercise program and they say, well, I don't meditate. This is what I do. I said, well, swimming is meditating because for swimming, for me, it's a form of meditation and it brings all my thoughts back in alignment and be there in the water. Mm -hmm. We teach people to go into stillness and um, learn how to release the monkey mind that is chattering in your head. You know, it's not going to happen overnight. It's going to take time and practice to say, talk to it and leave it on the shelf. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mm -hmm. Food. Yeah, all the food is curated depending on like uh, preferences and typically vegetarian, but not always Mm -hmm. because there's an increasing number of people who are like, no, I I need animal protein um, every day. And so we respect that and we source uh, the most local and most organic or uh, energetically integrous uh, meat producers in the valley that we live in. Mm-hmm. And and then it's the other part that's curated is we get to know our people and we get to know them as like, hey, what's going on in your life? What's going on in relationships? What's going on in your businesses? And like, how can we support you in what's at the forefront? What really wants to be worked on? And just, yeah, like there's so many different stories that are just popping in my head right now about all of the different people that we've been working with and something as simple as like, oh my goodness, I just had like a a brilliant, heartful connection with my 16 year old teenager. And I realized that this has just changed everything about how he is going to carry forward with connecting to his children in the future. And so just those little things of like preparing people and and then also helping people integrate and continue to using the tools that they really are called to use. And like we often say that we're gonna sort of present you with like a, a new wardrobe of energetic tools to use, but we just ask that you try on each piece and see if it fits for you. Mm-hmm. And if it doesn't, it's okay to not use it, but at least try it on and, and see how you might be able to work with it. And um, yeah, it's just really important for people to be open to say, hey, yeah, I'm willing to to like look at meditating and energy centers and working with my chakras or um, working with a, the quantum realm of reality. I mean, you guys really work with the entire being, like you said in the beginning, somebody had to release, you know, karma, you know, karmic trauma, and, you know, you're, they're recognizing that they're not picking up on triggers anymore. It's, it's a very like inclusive modality that you're offering for people. It offers everything. And I feel like it's, you know, it's almost, it's this beautiful package that you offer, you know, for an individual to really have this amazing life that they really desire within but maybe not know how to get there Mm -hmm. I just it's such a beautiful thing and and I like it's for me it's like and I like that you bring up there's different types of meditation because I think sometimes you're like I must sit here and you know and listen to music or chant or whatever like for me I do energetic meditations you know I don't necessarily I don't have to consciously listen to them I know the energy is going on so I appreciate that you bring that up you know Mm -hmm. I think we get stuck in this idea of this only one way yeah <laughs> yeah uh, yeah and I think that's the other part too is that like with a journey with us there's a big part of like because we take that time and curate the experience for the individuals that's like honoring their uniqueness and like we had a client that she was like well I might come and like do the the thing that I usually don't do and I'll come into a group journey with you and then a few days later, she, we jump on a call with her again. And she's like, heck no, I want to do this all <laughs> on my own. I am a unique creature of, of habit. And this is how I want this experience to be for me. Yeah. And I, I just want Robin Gary all to myself. And I want that experience just for myself. And so it's, yeah, it's really honoring people's unique uniqueness. And it's <laughs> not about like, it's for the most part, like, <laughs> how far out of the box can you create because we don't need the boxes 
No, you, you guys definitely do not need the box. <laughs> the <laughs> box is non-existent with the work that you do. Correct. <laughs> yeah. That is so true. So in your um, bios, you mentioned that when plant medicine psychedelics are facilitated with reverence, individuals can a- achieve greater awareness of their true selves. Mm-hmm. How do you create a safe and respectful environment for these experiences? Mm-hmm. Gosh, um, that's a loaded question. How long do we have? Uh, there's, uh, we jokingly say, yeah, two minutes left. There's a big part of what, like, I'm sort of the sky crew, Gary's ground crew, and I work with the energetics of the space. We both do. We both have sky crew and ground crew. Uh, however, I'll typically work at the macroscopic level on the energetics of the whole entire space, where Gary's typically more attuned to what is that person thinking about in this moment and how can I meet them on the inside and help them through that, that in the inner realms. Mm. And, and again, it's, we've fostered that relationship with them and we've met with them like a few times, even before we've invited them in. And there's just that resounding level of trust that people have with us. And because it is, you're putting yourself in a vulnerable state and to, to know that you're going to be treated with a high level of respect and integrity and a high level of professionalism is it's, it's paramount for a lot of our clients yeah. and that there's like no funny business and like, whatever that is. Uh, Cause sometimes we get that question. I was like, what are you talking about? Uh, that just does not enter our realm. It's high level of intent, high level of purpose, high level of, 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 purpose-driven journeys that it's like hey this individual is willing to go to the depths of their inner being Mm -hmm. and like really dig away at some of the things that have been there for lifetimes and for us there's no greater honor or yeah there's no greater honor to guide someone through that experience and that reverential piece it's like we ask people like can you revere this experience for the rest of your life and we usually ask that like on the second or third call and people are like oh like okay i'm not sure really what that means but all it does is it just opens this door that they can walk through again and again and again and again so it sort of sets the stage that this is something you may only have to do once in your life and you can learn from that one experience for the rest of your life Mm -hmm. we've had one client well we have a number of clients but this one client member is saying she says you've invited four strangers into your center in your home and this is the most love i've ever experienced in my whole life it was like oh my god (laughs) tears it was beautiful yeah yeah. i mean i like the way that you put it that it's like you know rob focuses on this macro level and then gary's within it's very like connecting with infinite intelligent but also the way that i'm seeing it you're mm-hmm. connecting with your heart center yes. while also i'm going off topic here also pulling in the all these different realms the multi-dimensional mm-hmm. being that we can truly connect with that other people mm-hmm. may not be aware with like that's, that's profound right. like i'm seeing mm-hmm. like you know inner realm i'm all over the place you know mother earth and the elementals and the galactics and the angelics and it's like all coming together for this really profound experience and Mm -hmm. and you treat it with such respect like this Mm -hmm. is not something light and easy Mm -hmm. this is something that we're going to do that will impact you for the rest of your life yes yeah on our website it says retreat but it's actually an intensive there's no no, there's re- no retreating retreating or vacating doesn't sound like it guys <laughs> <laughs> i mean we do have a pool and a hot tub and a beautiful view but <laughs> yeah that's a bonus but yeah you hit the nail on the head with that description yeah yeah that's it's beautiful so before i ask the final question um if anyone is interested in learning more about these retreats, AKA intensives and other things that you guys offer, where's the best place for them to go to? Yeah, we have a brilliant website, www.thejourneymen, M-E-N, collective, one word, dot com. Also on Instagram and Facebook. That's beautiful. So to our listeners, do you have any advice or wisdom that you would like for them to share with them that could further empower them on their spiritual journeys and personal growth? 
Mm -hmm. I, I know always, it's a meaty question. I know it's like you know I always have the same answer. <laughs> learn how that. to learn how to think with your heart and love with your mind. It's a good one. Mm -hmm. It's a good one. Anything you want to add? Sure, I would say ask yourself the question: What am I to remember into so that I can serve another? another person, community, or the planet. That's beautiful. Well, Gary and Rob, I want to thank you both so much for coming to the Spiritual Spotlight Series. You guys are amazing. And I definitely look forward to speaking with you again in the future. Brilliant. Thank you so much. This thank was you, great. Thank you. Thank you.